Well, why don't we uh, go ahead and get started? Again, welcome everybody. I am Arn van Alstafjord, and I'm the Chief Learning Officer at the Consortium for Service Innovation. And I head up the training and certification arm of the consortium. And for today's KCS in Action, I'm pleased to introduce Jorge Carrasco. And Jorge will be discussing best practices for a social KDE program. And he'll discuss those from his experiences at Quest. And Jorge led the uh, social KDE program at Quest um, and currently runs his own consulting company focused on digital uh, transformation. And uh, Jorge, many of some of you might have remembered, but Jorge presented a couple of years ago on this very topic and it was very well received. And uh, he's made some improvements to the program since then, and we're pleased to have him back again. Uh, but some housekeeping before we begin. This session is being recorded and we post on the consortium site as well as sent out to all who have registered. And please put yourself on mute during this event. Um, and please post your questions in chat. So I'll be monitoring the chat and we'll either bring them up, uh, I'll either answer them in the chat, bring them up as appropriate um, to Jorge in the flow or save them for the Q&A session at the end. And we'll include the final chat transcripts in our email so we'll see about all those who have registered. And Jorge uh, welcomes people to connect on LinkedIn with him and send any questions that you didn't get answered today or additional questions that you think of later. And he had many people reach out after the last time he presented and he'd welcome uh, that again. And also wanna make sure you are aware of upcoming KCS Academy events. And we have our signature event and that is coming up in March in San Diego. And while we call it the Member Summit, uh, non-members are very welcome to attend also. And we'll have many great presentations from practitioners and leaders. We'll also host many open space sessions where the participants can bring up their topics uh, that they want to discuss. And there'll also be many opportunities to make a lasting connection with your peers. And then in April, we have our popular KCS roundtables. So we give you the opportunity to ask questions from experienced practitioners on a variety of topics. Uh, some of them uh, getting started on your KCS journey, launching and sustaining a KCS coaching program, maximizing KCS with effective knowledge domain analysis, uh, et cetera. So we'll have, we're targeting to have six uh, breakouts. Uh, you get to do two. And so if you'd like to uh, attend more than that, definitely bring a friend. And then I'm also finalizing sessions on change management um, best practices for your KCS program, as well as launching KCS with small teams and limited resources. So I have two uh, excellent presenters there. We're just working out the details on the dates and everything. So we'll get those events posted in our calendar uh, in the next couple of weeks. And Jennifer Morcat, our community success manager, will be posting the uh, link uh, for those events in the chat. But I'm very excited about uh, today's event and uh, pleased to pass it over to Jorge. Good day, everyone. Um, thank you for coming in today. It's actually, it's fantastic to see you today. Um, yeah, we started this a couple of um, few years back since 2016, we launched our KCS program in Quest, uh, full throttle, and it's been a journey. Uh, first, let me talk a little bit about myself. I started a long time ago in aviation. Actually, I'm a pilot, but I stopped being a pilot because I had an accident, so I had to move from other industry. During that time, I actually learned a lot of how knowledge helps you, how not just empirical knowledge, but what it's reading, but also the empirical knowledge that everyone gets to understand or to learn through uh, experience. So then I became a trainer. After a trainer, I moved into, um, I started studying marketing. I started um, uh, doing work in the food industry as a marketing manager. It was fun. Then I moved to uh, as a uh, technical support engineer. At that point, uh, we started learning a lot more things about what is KCS. I had no idea. So we started there. I started getting certifications or started getting knowledge about it. I started working with my good friend, Monique, at that time. Cadena, and she got me hooked into it. Um, when she left, I I kept the knowledge management and social media part all together, which was different. So at that time, uh, 
not only KCS was being done as a for champions or coaches to help uh, engineers become better at what they do and getting um, sharing the knowledge and get creating that hive um, mentality, but not also creating this KDE program. We changed it into KDE uh, from KDE to social KDE. We started create, um, having them reply on communities. We opened up uh, social media channels and did so many things differently that were not were not written or were not supposed to be done that way. But we took a stab at it. We kept within the KCS parameters, and that's the good thing. At the end is something that grew by itself it just took off had a lot of uh side steps thankfully not backwards but side steps but and now it's very very different it's actually um living organism working on its own and it's so um it was so successful uh i became a victim of my own success and i was able to leave um um, Quest and KCS, and it's running completely by itself. It's had complete automation. It's doing everything on its own. So now I've I've started my own firm for knowledge and uh, processes and digital transformation. I'm a consultant now, and the good thing is it's different things that you're going to see um, that we did. If you came to the past um, presentation, you'll see information that you've seen before, but updated. So different things that we started making sure that you're going to need through your journey as uh, moving on forward, creating this process and this uh, program of a K social KDE. So let's continue. You, there you have my social media account. At the end, I'll share it with you again. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at any time. If you want to meet, of course, I'm available. Hey, we'll make it work. The idea is... I like sharing knowledge and I would love to share it with you guys. So let's get into brass tacks. What I created during that time is we started just with the community. So it was just a quest community which has everything. Uh, it was about 10 products at that time. And then we started expanding. We opened one identity, Syslog NG, and those communities, each one are now moving over 30,000 people uh, as active users which is good. Every person that ha has connection to one of the Quest or One Identity products is now a part of the community. You don't need to be have a support contract in order to be there. We can provide you the information from our support portal, uh, which has our knowledge base, but it's very eagles, uh, an eagle side view, something very um, wide scope, nothing more granular. If you have more trouble, of course, they're going to move you to opening a support case. Of course, the same way works with YouTube and um, Twitter. Twitter's proven to be the most effective tool when people just want to get something done real quick. So our turnout time on Twitter was an hour. So every time you spoke, uh, send a message uh, during working hours, in an hour later, you'll have, at the most, you'll have an answer. At least you have uh, the knowledge shared of a KB article that could help you with your issue. If the issue becomes greater, then we'll create a service request for you. So that way, that incident, that issue that you have will be sent to a, a support engineer for that product and will assess you. Uh, same as on YouTube. YouTube is more of a channel of sharing the videos of how to do something on our, uh, on our products. So each product will have a video how to set it up, how to change something, how to uh, create a workflow for X, Y, or Z. And that's done for every product. We don't have a video um, department that does that for you. In, in fact, our KDEs, uh, which are, are also video reviewers, take care of creating those step-by-step -step videos. And we started noticing that short videos were even more effective nowadays. So our videos that we created are now two to three minute stops because attention spans today or of the new guys are very, very low. It's not on the old days that we had a video, a 10 minute video that's playing everything. 
by the, by the detail, it just, we started segmenting those to smaller things and providing our customer faster self, self service. So um, let's continue. Okay, so this is one of some of the cases on um, Twitter that you get. I have a problem with this one. I'm running this version and this version is not working. I need help. So I provide, we provide the information or we request our service request. Uh, we set up a service request for uh, engineer to contact them. If it's something that we prov can provide, we just send them a link with the uh, actual KB article that might help them. So it's very straightforward. One thing is we do not let our KDEs reply directly on social media. Remember, social media, it's there's a lot of people that it's they're not up to no good. So you had have to have a person that's actually understand a hundred percent that and be able to mitigate and then reply. Because you have uh, the first thing you're gonna have is just like a call. Uh, someone calling that has a gut complex and saying, you know what, your system doesn't work. This sucks. This doesn't, this is not right. So you have to have a person that's always a moderator that's able to de-escalate the issue and then provide solutions or at least choices to the customer. That way you change that bad experience to a positive one and create at least a neutral one and provide service to the customer. So when he comes or she to uh, the actual service request if needed, they actually they will not have that uh, that apprehensive attitude before coming into uh, to that service. So out of the get go, you create a better experience and better self service. Of course, um, communities, yeah, engineers do reply directly themselves. They've been trained to. We have a social media principles um, training that we created. So people are always looking at them and able to see that. The idea is for them to be always av um, available. They reply every 24 hours. And that's the good thing because the, that time will allow the other users also, not only the you know, our engineers to reply back, thus creating an organic and a very living organism. They are talking to themselves they are providing information. They are saying what they know by their experience and that way providing that information. Next slide, please. So we all know this. So the KDE lives in the evolved loop area. So while our engineers are at the beginning, the regular support engineers are working with captures within the solve loop. Our um, SKDs work on the evolve loop. What they do, they do content health analysis. They do predictive social uh, support. They do content help. They'll help evolve all our content or create content that is needed by requests of people through social channels, either our support portal, which has a lot of traffic. You are able to have a, uh, you can leave feedback of that, um, of that KB article or also provide um, a solution for the article or request an article that it's not there. Hey, I'm looking for this and I can't find it. Actually, one of our KDEs will reply back only to that customer. Hey, you know what? Here's your information. It is, if it's not there, they'll create it for it. So there's always a, a, an open communication between our customers and the KDEs. The idea is for the champions to be able to focus on our engineers and the KDEs will be focus, focusing on our customers. Next one. Um, one thing, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them on the chat. And Arvin will let me know and I will we'll be glad to stop during that, uh, that moment and provide a reply immediately. So these are the, the overview of the SKDs, the roles and the benefits. They work with Evolve Loop articles. They are working on the social channel, on the community's content gap analysis. But the intent of the SKD is to encourage positive customer sentiment. That's the main part. 
it's remember when usually when people come into social media to complain to, they are upset about about something and it's our job to change that experience okay uh next one oops Okay, so who could, uh -huh. and we do have a quick question. Why a KD over a knowledge worker when dealing with social? And I think you touched on a little bit that um, uh, the knowledge worker is directly answering Twitter, but you want to elaborate on that? Okay, the okay the social the KD is a why don't we let them answer directly on social media? It's because you need to diffuse the situation quick and in the right way it's a person that has more uh more social media knowledge it's not only someone that's read a, a letter course or something it's a person that's actually a community manager or is a person that needs to be on top of things so the wording of what you're going to do to diffuse a, a, an active or volatile public situation is different at that uh, at that moment so the idea is they get the information, they get the problem, they contact the KD for that issue, and they are provided the KB article, then they reply back. So why just not a knowledge worker? Because there are more things in front of them that just replying for the information. You need to diffuse a situation, which is not, uh, not easy while working in words only. Remember, words, any chats after you've seen on WhatsApp or anything that you have friends or you talk to someone, sometimes even a word that's not meant the right way, it ignites something, even though you didn't mean it that way. So we have to be careful about that just to keep a positive ex uh, experience throughout the process. And I think the, um, just to un underscore that you mentioned that the KDEs are strictly in the evolve loop. So when it comes to solve loop dealing with social, you just as you point out, you have the your agents, knowledge workers engaging there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they're always going to also evolve loop everything that's evolving, and they are providing the information to uh, um, to the person that it's requ that is requiring it at that moment. So the knowledge worker will create the knowledge. The person that's working for facing it's the KDE to the public. If, remember, our engineers are creating the content. There's not a person that is dedicated to create content. It's just an engineer while doing its work is actually doing, uh, capturing the knowledge through the process and provide, uh, provide and creating new knowledge and um, putting it out there for everyone to, um, to be able to solve service. The KDE will evolve that knowledge and talk socially through different social media channels. So there are two different things at that moment, because then we're gonna imagine we have over uh, we, um, 300 plus engineers having 350 people talking on social media. It's a gamble, a huge gamble. And I, I know you, I think you have a slide on this, but, um, and actually I think even a question, but there's a question coming in. Are your um, TDs dedicated uh, full-time resource? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I'm gonna talk about it in a few moments. Great. Actually. Okay, so who creates content? We know this, they're content creators, which are engineers, which create modified solutions, submit to, to, to review, then comes the publisher. I'm sorry. And then, does the same things that the creator, but they are responsible that the content consumption is ready. I'm sorry, the content is ready for public consumption and meet all KCS containers. So they do the same thing. Every support engineer is a content creator, but they are not, everyone's not a publisher. We close a little bit of the, uh, of the need of having everybody become a publisher because what we realize is that sometimes Managers tend to push for everyone to be publishers, but it's not actually a good, um, it's not a good idea at the end because you're gonna have a lot of duplicated and garbage content at that time because there are people that 
since they're pushing for everyone to become a publisher, they don't look at the fine uh, and the fine little things when it comes to be a publisher. So anybody cannot be a publisher. We have to be honest about it. You can read a, a textbook and just fill out an exam, but your champions are the ones that are going to tell you he's ready to become a publisher or not. There's been a lot by experience, I'm telling you, not everybody is fit to become a publisher. Every engineer can be a creator, but not every creator can be a publisher. And there was a, a, a quick question from Alan. And when you're talking about when uh, customers report um, content gaps through social media, do you find those are accurate? Um, or, you know, if they're not accurate, do your KDs then, I think you mentioned they provide them the knowledge article, or if they can't find it, then they create one? Correct. So we have different tools, which I'm going to talk later about it, and to how to we get our information. We have content gap analysis. We have 404 con, uh, searches or no, or no searches. We have information that comes from different um, data sources, which are cent uh, centralized and then provided. If they're looking for something and they can't find it, we get that actual search that they get. It's like how to create a KB article. Just to put on, uh, but they... I, um, I need to transfer a KB article and those words are not exactly in our content. The KD will help out adding some of those keywords on the back end of the search uh, of, the, of the KB for SEO. So they're able to find it. And also at that same time, provide that customer that KB article that actually exists. If it doesn't exist, then they'll come in and um, and change it on, or create one, depending on what they need. Okay. Next one. Great. So and this was, uh, we had a leading question from Elena. So thanks for that, about how many KADs. Um, so, okay. oh, that's, I'm sorry. That's the, uh, your next slide on the, you're going to get And that's the next one. Uh, that's before the, our poll that we're going to do today. Okay. Uh, SK, so in, in, when it comes to a, couple, um, a little bit about logistics, the SKDs perform their duties as a part of our 40 hour work week. It's not, we have no dedicated SKD. So that's one of the things we need to have immediately in front of us. Um, we need to create a pilot and then have a phase for rollout. Don't go all in, it will crash and management will say, eh, that doesn't work, let's try something else. We have a weekly SKD team meetings for ongoing trainings, updates. We merge once a month KDs and, and champions in order to, so everybody knows where everyone is standing at that moment. So this is what we're doing, this is what we add. Have you seen something? That way we get it back and forth. Hey, some products we're getting this problem. People are asking a lot about it and they are not finding it because of these kind of keywords. And they provide feedback back and forth from the K KDs to the coaches and um, the other way around. So that helps internally how coaches train their uh, engineers and um, also how... Um, uh, SKDs are looking at things that are being done by the coaches. So each one, the SKDs and the uh, champions have their own handbook and checklist to ensure all their duties are complete. They, if they have a actual um, list that they know what to do, they're always going to do it. Don't leave that to chance. Instruct them immediately what the information is going to, uh, what their duties and tasks are going to be, so they can divide it through their work week inside of it. Of course, managers do provide a little bit of leeway to the SKDs and to the coaches because they need time to do a little bit of this, but it's not a, they're not, um, they are not, they don't have exclusive time. So you're going to, from one to five, you're going to be doing this only. No. 
if um, they they have on Monday there's an issue at 12 p.m. They will stop. They will address it and then continue to do with their work week. It's not that they have uh, they have a lot of time through the day, but it's not fixed. They can move it back and forth in order to solve issues. There are days they don't need to do anything because nothing comes in or other people are replying immediately. So they're good. Because remember, like um, for, for this company, we have over 58 different products, five business units. So there's a lot of things in there. So not everybody calls about everything. So, and the knowledge management team will have one-on-one with each ASKD weekly. Come in, hey, how are you doing? Is Germania giving you enough time? How can I help? How can I make this better? So I will meet with each one of them through the week, at least 15 minutes. It's very agile. I change things to agile meetings. Not more than 15 minutes are going to be the meetings. We get to understand what's going on and move forward. How can I help you? Just like a Scrum Master, you come in. What are our, our challenges? Where are we at? What needs to be completed? How can I help? And then move on. Okay. Next one, please. Oh, yeah. And there's so, just a, a quick one on this. When you're talking about the uh, the checklists, um, uh -huh. and you mentioned you have checklists for KDs, coaches, champions. So I imagine those are all different. Yes, but, each one has their own uh, duties. Exactly. So, like, uh, who does the AQI? Like champions, they have to do the AQI. They're looking at accuracy. They're one on ones with their uh, engineers, etc. The KDs will have. Come into communities, review your product, um, move to uh, view um, your content gap analysis at least once a week, uh, review null searches once uh, once every two weeks, or move. Um, it depends. So, depending on the need or the load, they have all their um, checklists set up for each uh, role. Each role has its own duties. So each one has to have their own checklist. Yep, great. Okay, and then can you comment just an example on how the uh, the KD and the coach collaborate? Oh, Some examples. Mm -hmm. So it comes with the remember the actual when they do the null searches. There's a lot of if there's a lot of calls or, or a lot of um, keywords that are popping up over and over again for that product. They provide that information to the coaches. So they are the ones that cascade it down to all engineers on their product. Hey, you know what? For this product, we're gonna have we're gonna we're getting a lot of uh, top call drivers for I don't know for uh, deployments on our product, but they are using installation in best of the, instead of deployment. So they know what are the SEO words that are needed to update these things. What are the main topics that people are looking for? What's going on? What are the main uh, issues that are presenting that, of course, the SKDs are solving through social media. They have to let know the rest of the team, hey, you know what? These are being top call drivers. So I created this, uh, this actual um, KB article. So you're probably gonna get a lot of calls of this one coming forward through the week. So the people know what they are providing a, a, a warning and to be ahead of the, of the issues that might be coming in later on. Because not everybody searches, somebody just, just gets on a phone and calls, hey, I have this issue. You know there's a KB article for it? Oh, I didn't know. Let me know what, what can I do. Okay, so you have to be careful on that one and you have to be am actually uh, vigilant on it. Great. And you ready for the next slide then? Yes. Uh, no. Um, no. Oh, no. So, yeah, I didn't think you yeah, wanted, I think you wanted to okay. do a uh, poll. No. Let's do a poll. One thing, and I want you guys by ra uh, hand raise or anything. Do you have dedicated SKDs or KDs dedicated in your company? And if you have, how many KDs per engineers or per, or per support people? What's your ratio? 
And, and when you say dedicated, are you asking if people have full-time KDs or just full they have time. a KD role? No, no, it's just a full-time KD. Okay. Let me open up the chat and see what's going to happen. So does anybody has um, a KD dedicated? Okay. We're at one per H11. Okay. A full time, first time. But okay. No full time KDs. Okay. Does anybody have, okay, full time KDs or dedicated? So the people that say that they don't have full time dedicated KD, do you have a person that, how many have? KDE is using as a role of a KDE, but it's still an engineer or support person. What's your ratio? And, and ratio of um, KDEs to engineers? Uh-huh. It's just like I have 100 guys out of those. They are 10 KDEs, but not full time. Looks like we're getting some good well, one to six mm -hmm. ratio, one to 20. One to 20, one to 10. One to 20. No, Heather, actually one to 20 is not a bad number. Don't, don't worry. Sometimes it's not about the number of the engineers. It's about the number of the products you're supporting. So remember, those are experts. So if you have 20 products, one person per 20 products, that will be small. But if you have like five products, one person's more than okay. Right. Product line, depending on part time, but yeah, last engagement I had 12 KDs, about one to six. That's a good one. That's a lot. 80 out of 100, that's one, like one every five almost. That's good. So it's all, oh, and products more than 20, oh, more than 25, 35, oh. Leonardo, and you have 18 out of 100. Well, if you have one KD per every two, that's good. That will give you, or they are going to be subject matter experts for two, three products, which is good. We had over here one every 10. Of course. You want that ne next slide then? Let's, next slide. Let's continue now with the slide. Thank you all for all of that feedback. So the features that I've made sure of it and worked for me is that the role is not dedicated because having a KD just doing that, it's tedious at some point. Um, it's underutilized. Uh, and you know, it's at the end, it's money. All the time that person is just using, doing one thing, it becomes stagnant and then it's not doing the work the right way. And there's not a lot of work to do uh, completely. So role is not dedicated. They spend four to five hours a week on it. Out of 350, uh, 350 plus in years, we have over oh, 30 KDEs, one every 10, uh, approximately. And the KDE is responsible for providing content to push out, not only to respond, but they need to, under, uh, they need to know what are the top call drivers and, and provide it to the social media manager so they can push it out through uh, Twitter, YouTube, or communities, even to feature a KB article through the communities so people know there's a new something new coming out. There's a new version to download. Things that will the the actual KD will know, but the person in marketing will not know yet. So you, uh, the KD knows what are top call drivers, what are they needed, and they are going with uh, with it. So they do not reply on social media channels directly, only on the communities. But the social media team is in charge to reply and diffuse the situations. And, and I imagine on the community, <laughs> um, your KDs are social KDs are first letting the community answer and then just the unanswered questions are replying. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Oh, for the uh, community forums, replying directly. So they'll wait for the community to um, answer. And if the unanswered ones, then they'll get They the have a 20 over. 24 hour wait period. So if it's something comes in the morning today, right? 8 a.m. By tomorrow, 8 a.m. at latest, they will reply. 
but not less than 20 hours. So on the 20 hour, 24 hour mark, they will pro, uh, provide the answer. That, that way we'll, uh, uh, people are not used to just first, communities are free. We are not charging anyone for support there. One, so let's look at it as a business. If I reply real quick with everything, first, the community is just a Q&A and not a living community. Okay, and two, if you reply immediately, people that will need uh, an actual support contract will not be able to, will not get that support contract because I can get all my information directly from um, from the communities. I'm, at some point, then uh, if I need to, if there's something too big, then I'll pay for um, support at that moment. So it's kind of also an, uh, a thing with money. But uh, not uh, always. Um, but the main thing is creating the necessity for the rest of the of the community to reply back. Not only the engineers that will get people going, and they talk, and it's just they they even get into discussions of something is done, and at that moment, the actual um, engineers will have to step in. He says, and just to you know to mitigate this issue, just to make it clear, this is what you need to do. Okay, let's see. Are there these are kiddies fully focused on social media only? They do, do the regular kitty work within their domain. They do their own work within their domain. They are engineers that have the role as an SKDE, Matesh. Okay. And so the traditional looking for searches with no results, uh, looking mm -hmm. at uh, top case drivers, how to shift left, all those things. You're, mm -hmm. you're they do that and, in initial social. Yeah, and Leonardo, uh, yeah, it's a, as I was saying, it's a free eagle's eye view of the issue. If you call in and says, you know what, I'm having an issue with this. And they will reply, hey, you know what? Here's a script that does that. Or here's the KB article, which they have access to. But if the issue is something that is actually not working on their system, the engineer will tell me, you need to create a service request. So that way, immediately, you can uh, direct the customer to a positive experience. What we're creating is self-service. Yes, because at the end, they know they have some place, their KB articles are there. So they're going to see that, hey, I just needed to ask in the community and they give the KB article. What, next time, why don't I search first? And then if I can't find it, I'll go to the communities and raise the question. And most of the time nowadays is that they search, they can't find, and then they come into the community for someone to, hey, you know, there's also a KB article on this, but they do not troubleshoot on the communities. There is no troubleshooting, just, hey, here's a KB article that can help you with it. Okay, let's move on. So let me show you a little bit of what, um, I was talking in regards of having the information at hand. So the best things that you can do is reporting. Get every channel that you can and every database that you have available and get feedback and actionable information out of it. So I work directly with one of my main guys is an actually a business intelligence expert. And I'm pulling him for, to do an actually uh, work on my firm now. Uh, the idea is to create information that you have available on your site. Like we use Coveo, which is a very, very good what case he is. It provides us our null searches, our, uh, our, our 404s, our content gap analysis, our most search articles the least search articles. So that information is needed for everyone to do the right job. And it's everything is in a um, in tabs inside of Power BI. So they have the explanation, uh, how, uh, the solution that's been created, which one has been modified, which has, has been uh, uh, all these statistics that you needed, everything that an engineer has created, something that's not being searched, everything that's been searched a lot of linked articles, the most linked articles through that month 
they get to see it in a monthly basis and see what's actually people looking for and they can create an action plan through it. So my secret, the secret of the success of my program was reporting. Keep the information clear first. Of course, they have to know their roles, their duties, and provide them support. But mostly, a comprehensive, granular, and big analytic reporting. Let me show you a couple of uh, examples. Let's move to the next one. Okay, so they get solutions created by Dave, impending status. Everything that's in draft sometimes stays in draft for a long time. And they get to see what they need to be actually getting things out there. They talk to the engineer and say, hey, are you finishing it? Actually, we need this KV article. Oh, I don't know how to finish it. The KD will help and maybe evolve that content that it's just needs a little push to be out there. So solutions that are not being linked to a SARS are solutions that are either not working or not clear enough or something is not, um, they're not needed or something's wrong with them. So the KD will can be able to see what's there and say, you know what, we need to fix this one because it's not providing the right information or this is something that it's not needed. It was solved by an actual uh, hotfix, something that's more uh, that's newer, and then you can retire or um, or um, archive that um, KB article. But that's going to be a decision made by the KDE. Next one. So, and you get real time analytics. This is running directly from a queue, which is pulled from the support portal at the second. So, that same day, all the information is, flow is flowing in. Every time they go in and click refresh, everything is updated. So, the participation, the reflection rate, everything, the comparison per region, those are the which regions are getting sending more information, more service requests, and which are not, which says our submission are confirmed and deflected. So we talk deflection. Let me talk about what I call deflection. We get information from the customer, the support portal. So the L, uh, from, uh, from the KB article, from the support portal, from the communities, from uh, the calls or emails received from the customer service or their support uh, um, team, everything gets fed like, okay, Arvin, Arvin just sent a, uh, just call in, uh, was looking for something in the support portal, okay? Because you have to sign it. So it's, it's got you there. It's not, at the, all the contents moved outside entitlement right now. So there's a service, but you have to log in to see it. You need to have a support contract to see it. But if you have it, it's linked to your support contract. So when you come in, you sign in, you review the content. If it's something that I needed, and on that date, I don't create a call or I don't create a case, of course, that counts as a deflection. It immediately self-service. So it's a real self service. It's not something that we're thinking of like, okay, he came in, but he abandoned. He didn't open chat or anything at that moment. No, if he doesn't open chat, if he doesn't call in that company, because if, um, like every user for the consortium, we have 10 users. Those 10 users have their own email account. If none of those emails which are linked to that customer open a ticket, then of course it's self service. They found what they were looking for and abandoned. If they don't open a chat, if they are not, that self-service as well. So if it doesn't create a case, it becomes self-service, but the data has to back it up. Just not by abandoning the site, because maybe I don't like what I'm seeing. I just close that and I call in, but I don't have that information from the, from Siebel or Salesforce that is giving you that information, pushing it in to your database. Okay. And for uh, participation, um, KB participation percentage, you want to define that, how you guys measure that? Oh, I, I forgot about that one. Um, KB participation, it was, oh yeah, I just. Oh, that's fine if you don't have it handy. Uh, just to remind me of it. Um, 
I'll come back to that one. Capers. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. And you want next slide? Yes, please. So when it comes to social media, then it comes to word cloud, then it comes to the demographics, the top engaging messages, the uh, all metrics from the native um, applications, but not only from native applications, but our social media tool, like if you're using Hootsuite, Sprout, um, Octopus, whichever, it gives you analytics, but never trust one source. We get that source and we push directly, uh, we pull it directly from the API, from the native Twitter API over YouTube analytics. All of that comes in also. And they do a comparison one by one to one. So you make sure what are your, uh, your top call drivers, your top engagement messages, what is not being looked at, what are people searching for? So then comes the content analysis, which is a work cloud. This guy, that I have is amazing doing that. So everything that people are searching for and clicking through, even through Google Analytics and through the AP, uh, the Twitter API comes to one place. So you're talking about a lot of databases, SQL and data. So you look for those on the tweets that are being sent and what's being top hold drivers. So it's about Oracle. Okay, we have Toad for Oracle. So people are looking for things in Toad for Oracle and we provide more information of what they're looking for. Our work cloud will let us know what they're actually looking for. And that in top engages uh, messages will let you know which ones are which. Then comes the demographics. Everything, then at that part comes where you should put shout content. So if your demographics are people more in the Netherlands, right now, you know the their time zone is different from you working on the Pacific area uh, time zone. So we're talking eight hours ahead of you. So you know what? At eight a.m., I will be at one. Of, I'm going to push out content instead of pushing eight a.m. my uh, my time. I'm going to push it at one a.m. Uh, my time, which will be nine a.m. their time. So you look for, and that will give you at what time people are engaging more with content and which kind of content they're looking for. And that way you can provide that information, thus creating faster and better self-service. It's always data is the most important thing that you need to have. If someone tells you differently, you're lying. Because you need that. So let's continue to the next slide. So these are the key takeaways or tips on that. Do automation. Don't get crazy and doing it on your own. It's a lot of data. Have someone help you with that. Create buying from your uh, from management and the ELT. Your managers will be advocates. The ELT, when you get buy big buying from one of them, they are gonna be your the people that are gonna push this and help you get what you need. They are essential, but you need to have someone at ELT, hey, going, up, uh, going to bat for you. That's, your, that's a big need. ELT, is that your executive leadership team? Yes. Okay. So directors, um, vice president, CEO, CFO, just get a buy-in on that one. For my, in my case, I got a lot of buying from the chief operations officer. And she was backing me up all the time. My director started backing me up all the time. And I had all the, uh, everything that I needed. I just asked, I need someone from, uh, from the BI team. Just pick one, talk to one, get some time with that. Let me know how much time you're going to need from this cycle. I'll separate it for you. Of course, the BI manager was not happy about it, but you know what? The boss of his boss says, you got to do it. So you always got to have a big person behind you. Always look for that one. Sell that to them first and then work your way up, down. Then you need to have full access to data. This is very important. Sometimes people are very, very uh, resellers, especially the guys that work in there. Um, security in your company, 
It's like, you have to be careful with this information and we, we cannot provide it. Okay, we cannot have real-time access to it. Then update it weekly into a cube, into a data cube that is separated from the main, uh, from the main database. And that's it. Or something that fits directly to a cube instead of, of you tapping indirectly to the main database. Partner with a data analyst. That's going to be crucial. This will give you, remember, Everything that you can learn, you will be able to learn it. You can do a lot of things with your knowledge, but this, a data analyst will help you succeed all the time. And always streamline your reporting, make sure it's clear on what you're looking for and make it granular. This is very important. Why granular? It has to have for which product it's talking about because the thing comes too general and you are not able to pinpoint what the issue is and how you can solve it, make it better or make it more streamlined. So always make it brand. Next one, please. Great. And so, we have just a time check. We have seven more minutes. Okay. So I'm going to go real quick on that one, on this one, because Guys, you have to be, uh, when you're going to be doing a migration, your knowledge is going to move and you have to be careful what your knowledge is going to work with and how is it going to work with and who's going to do it because you have to be the biggest, biggest advocate and you got to be pushy about it because knowledge gets always put in the back furnace when you're doing a migration. So I love Salesforce, but can we change to the next slide, please? But this is something I learned from that. Now we need to use two different tools from Content Health and Case Linking. Knowledge migration from SEAL provided many issues, changes in the URLs. Remember, you have content that's already out there and people are searching for it, but the URL changes. So if you are sending an email out to your customers with the URL, when it changes, or you have it on your appliances, they no longer work. We didn't have, uh, we used to have our videos on Brightcov. It's not working anymore. We needed to come to a different uh, solution at the, at the moment. Why? Because we provided the information, but it was put on the back burner, on the backlog when we were, they were doing the implementation. And you always have to be very mindful of that. So always back up your content in another format or least index before migrating. That way you can find it Real quick, you make sure you're clear about your needs, expectation to the project manager and be vigilant on the request and updates. Make sure to request in, in writing. This is very important. What can or cannot be done before starting to look for a solution beforehand and never rush a migration. So make sure everything is as needed or something will go, go wrong. And if it goes wrong, make sure there are a few issues as possible. Next one, please. And this is for you. Migration will be stressful for everyone. You're, be clear on your needs and uh, what needs to be done to keep your same standards or better. Be clear in repercussions to management if requirements are not met. They, they don't know it, but when it becomes an issue, when the customers are calling back, you're the one that are being said, why didn't you tell us? This is what's going on. What can we do then? Be sure you keep that all in writing, okay? And you are the product owner of this. So you need to be on top of things. Knowledge is not as important to management until the customers express their discontent. And we want to avoid that, okay? Let's go on and continue to the last one. And this is your key items to a successful KD firm. Upper management buying, just ELT. You need to have a strong advocate, your director, your VP, et cetera. You need budget and resources, but be clear what you need. Don't go crazy asking for a lot. Ask for a, for a lot, but you get a little. That way you will be able to start working and then going forward, ask for a little more. For management, they, you, they need to become promoters of the initiative. You need out to allocate times for the SKDs to perform their duties. They need to have clear understandings of the process and the goals. Hey, by creating this deflection self-service, you're going to have 30% real deflection. It's about half, 30% of all the calls 
are not coming in. If you have 10,000 calls and 3,000 of them are not coming in, there's a lot more time for your engineers to do better things and to work things faster. Engineers, the, uh, when it comes to the engineers of the SKDs we're talking about right now, they have to have the right fit personality. They have to be self-driven and very eager. Social media verse, they have to be SMAC certified, social media and community certified. And they have to be an SME, social, uh, subject matter expert on their products. Any questions on that one? Okay, so next one. So this, I leave it so you have an open discussion every time. Who do you have for formative loop items? KDEs, the managers, or any others? And why? Is it actually best fit to have doing a vault loop from a manager? Is it not? It depends on your structure, the procedures, your process and procedure, who's responsible for how often they do the tax, they, do they have their checklist for everything they have to know once a week, once a day, once a month, what does it need to be done? And they be clear, they have to be clear about it. Tools, what type of tools are you using? Remember, reporting, top one, okay? And automate it as much as possible. And the outcomes, what measures do you look and how you determine sex? What are your KPIs, okay? Any questions, guys? Okay, and... Well, that's complete, uh, everything I uh, wanted to show you today. And I'm going to leave you here with my actual, um, um, my social media channel. Feel free to follow me, ping me, send me information, ask me questions. I'm happy to do it. And just because I'm, I've been working on one of the things that have to be very, very, very important, that's going to be very important for you. Work hard, but play hard. Next one, Arvin. Yeah, here's some play. Uh, I'm a musician. I surf from a kid. I, I do whatever it needs to be done just not to be cooked up. There's a lot of information going to your heads every day, and you have to balance it out. Don't get burned out. I started sometimes like three years without any vacations, just pushing this kid forward, making sure my baby, my KDE program, and my social media and learning and development was working fine but I forgot to play. Now I do it balanced. I play sometimes, I surf sometimes, I mountain bike sometimes, and I work as hard as well. And that's all I have for you guys. Whatever you need, ping me, add me on LinkedIn. We'll have a chat. We'll meet up if you have any questions. If you need any pointers for your, for your program, I'm here, okay? Well, thank you so much, Jorge. Really appreciate it. And again, he's uh, if you want to reach out to him, it's uh, he's always willing to, to share his knowledge. And I uh, hope to see you all. Actually, it'd be great to see as many of you at face-to-face uh, -face in the member summit in uh, in March, um, but certainly at the, uh, the round tables. Those are always very rewarding. So look for you at um, our upcoming events. Thank you all and have a nice rest of the day. Bye, guys.